okay. We good to go. I think we're about ready to get started. Uh, well, actually, people clawing around. Come on in, have a seat. I'm Mike St. John's. I am going to be giving you a presentation on newcomer, the newcomer's presentation for the IETF. Um, a little bit weird since I'm the person who's attended more of these than anybody else. This is my 94th meeting. Um, you're standing at the end of the road before a small brick building. Does anybody recognize that phrase at all? OK, I must be old. There's an old computer game called Adventure, and it's a text adventure game, and you type in go east, go north, look, and various other things. The whole idea is about mapping out a cave, and that's sort of what I'm going to try and help you do with respect to the IETF here. You're going to see this slide a lot. This is the IETF note well. You don't have to read it right now. It's available online. It's available in pretty much every meeting you go to. But you do need to be aware about the policies of the IETF. If you're here and you're talking about something with a group of people, be aware that you're probably making what's called an IETF contribution. So it's not, it, it, don't expect all your conversations here to be private unless you set them up to be private. So just, just be aware of that and read this a little bit more to understand what a contribution means. It can actually, you know, something that you thought was an interesting idea that you wanted, that was patentable. If you're talking here, you need to be very careful about those types of things that belong to your, your company and things like that. This presentation is not about the history of the IETF or the form and structure of the IETF. There are places you can go to um, to find them. Specifically, this document here, and I'll actually talk and I'll actually give you the URL for that. If you want more of the history, find one of us old timers and buy us a beer. We'll tell you more than you want to know. Um, we've been doing this now for something like 35 years, so there's a lot of history here. It's also not how to write a standard. For newcomers, you're mostly not going to be immediately working in, in the end part of the document, in the end part of the process of getting something out for publication, but there are places you can go if you want to understand the process. This is really about how you do your first meeting, how you survive and get the most out of it without basically looking like this guy at the end. This guy at the end. Um, and believe me, I've looked like this more times than I care to think of. This is a very intense week. There's a lot going on here. Um, it can be confusing. If you need to, stop, take a breath, grab a beer, sit down, talk to people, and then start up and move up and, and continue. I'm going to be talking about the IETF, just a, a brief overview of what we are, how we differ from standards development, other standards development organizations, some idea about how to act in the IETF, the etiquette of the meeting, the difference between working groups and birds of a feather sessions, and you'll see both of those on the agenda. Etiquette for a working group, which is a modification in addition to just dealing with the meeting. How the IETF makes decisions, the, the consensus process. A description of some of the people that are important in this process and who you may encounter during your week here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the documents, tool, documents and tools that are available. There's another group that meets with us that's sort of a subsidiary of the IETF called the Internet Research Task Force. I'll talk about them briefly. And the main reason I'm talking about them is they meet here and you may want to sit into some of their sessions. And finally, I'll point you to some of the other resources available. At the end of this, I'm also going to give you a quick briefing on the network and the Jabber tools, the, the um, chat rooms that we use for meeting, for meeting purposes while you're here. 
So the IETF is a organized activity in the Internet Society. The Internet Society has, has been around actually later, uh, was created after the IETF was, but we got sort of adopted by them. We are a voluntary organization that develops standards. And I say voluntary uh, because none of the standards here are mandated. Um, if you go into a particular, um, some standards organizations have a legal basis. We just get them by, by uh, voluntary ado ad ad adoption, I'm sorry. At this meeting, you're going to be seeing lots and lots of working group sessions. The IETF consists primarily of working groups and they're organized into, into basically areas as described here. I'll talk about the areas a little bit later. Most, if not all, of the work is done in the working groups themselves. There's a, occasionally we get, we, we get single person standards that are developed, but for the most part, it's a collaborative effort in, then, that's done in the working groups. You'll also see some notes about the Internet Architecture Board. In fact, you might, if you've never been to the IETF or, never, or this is really your first encounter with it, you might have heard of the IAB because they tend to be our outwardly facing part of the internet standards process. And there's a cr lot more that you can learn, but the details aren't going to be immediately useful for you for the meeting. So I'm mostly going to gloss over them. If you have questions about those, you can ask them in the question and answer session at the end. But I'm mostly going to point you at other documents or just say, leave it for another meeting or leave it until you actually need to know it. So don't drink from the fire hose if you don't have to drink from the fire hose. We develop standards in the internet area and that's important to understand. We are from basically just above the, the, the logical or link layer area all the way up into the applications, occasionally up into the political space. We don't like to deal with that all that often but it is an organization that is looking for standard uh, that works on standards to make them scale, to make them manageable, to make them so that you don't have to be a PhD to deploy them, and to make them continue to be relevant to the world as we go. As I said, we've been doing this for about 35 years. Earlier years, we were working on routing protocols and things like that. And now we're working on the Internet of Things type of type of protocols. So we will develop or we will evolve over time in what we're going to be working on. Um, but mostly, if it doesn't have internet related to it really quickly, it's not what we're going to be doing here. How many of you people have participated in another standards development organization? IEEE, OK. And this is your first meeting here for most, OK. So the IETF is different than all these or other organizations. Most of the other organizations, you're going to have some form of voting. You're going to have some form of formal membership. We talk about IETF members. There really isn't such a thing. You are IETF participants. You can come here, work on what you want to work on, but as members, you have no formal status in, in the structure here except for what you contribute to the system. Um, a normal standards development organization, you're voting on behalf of yourself, you're voting on behalf of an organization, or in some cases, you're voting on behalf of the country. Not here. Um, we are all internet technology, and we are all bottom up. So we're mostly working on, on things that people have brought to us that are good ideas that they want to bring into the system, rather than the organization deciding that we have to work on these things and pushing it down into working groups. So if you've got good ideas, and we really want to hear good ideas, that's, this is the place to be because you can bring them in and, and, and bubble them up through the process. Um, the other, by the way, the other standards development organizations are all over the place. We are internet, they will do things like the number of, of threads on a screw, or strangely enough, there is a standard for a fruitcake that's an international standard. We don't develop those. Oh, sorry, the bottom. If you've been involved in other standards development organizations, you might get a little bit of shock about dealing with the IETF. So just be prepared. We aren't traditional. We're very informal. We are smart people with opinions. 
and I guess that pretty much describes everybody that you're going to encounter here for the most part. Sometimes we have a fairly blunt way of speaking, and that's partially because the IETF, like all organizations, has some form of its own culture. We've got 35 years of cultural development that's happened. So if you're coming in here and expecting your culture to trump our culture, you're going to lose. You need to pay, pay attention to what's going on in the IETF and how we interact. Over time, your participation will change the way we behave or, or the culture of the IETF, but you, we're not going to adapt to you. You're going to end up helping us adapt over a long period of time. Now, the last point I put here is just to remind me to talk about one thing that's very important. We get people coming in from other standards development organizations who think the IETF is like the other standards built organizations, and sometimes they come in in mass. They try and the, game the process by basically getting lots of people who go, this is a wonderful idea, this is a wonderful idea. Dumb ideas, of course, please present it, are still dumb ideas. We're going to know the difference. We, we, we have over many, many years. So we want to hear from you. We want to hear what your good technical ideas are. And, and we don't really want you basically doing a marketing presentation for your, uh, for your companies or for your organizations. If you don't believe in the idea technically, you're probably, not gonna, you're probably not going to have a good result with respect to your participation here. Know your, know your technology, know what you want to do with it, know why it's important, and be willing to talk to people about that process throughout here. Again, probably not something that's going to happen to you immediately in the first meeting, but be aware of this as you go forward. We meet three times a year. We've been doing this for, like I said, 35 years. This is the 99th meeting. 100th meeting is, next, is in Singapore next time around. We are running about 1,000 to 1,500 in this band. We've been up as high as 2,400 during the dot-com boom. Um, we have a number of organized activities that are going to happen during the meeting. And you'll see them here. The working group sessions, that's the primary, uh, primary group of things that are happening. Um, and you'll see those on the agenda. Uh, birds of a feather, I'll talk about the difference between what a birds of a feather is versus a working group in a second. IRTF sessions, I mentioned those earlier. As I mentioned, the, the working groups are organized in areas, and there's usually at least one area-wide session for each one of these meetings where you can go in and get a quick overview of everything that's happening in the area. Um, sometimes it's as simple as, yes, I've submitted the agenda. Sometimes it's an introdu introduction to a new topic that the area is trying to figure out whether or not they want to talk about. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's completely boring. So take, a, take them with a grain of salt. Um, there are IETF-wide meetings. And there's, one, there's actually only one of these this time around. We've had, we've had times where we've had two separate sessions. One is administrative, one is technical. Right now, we have one session. It's on Wednesday night. It is a combination of both. And it is um, the boring stuff about the meetings and how many people and where they came from and how much money we're spending and things along those lines. And then there's technical presentations sometimes on topics of really important interest, some uh, computer privacy, uh, uh, persistent threats, things along those lines. Sometimes it's uh, uh, human rights and computer protocols, I think was one of the ones we had. So take a look at the agenda. You'll get a better idea of what's going on there. Um, you're in, in one of the tutorials. Sunday is the day of tutorials. Most of the IETF is not a tutorial is not a tutorial program. It is a working session all the way through the thing. So if you are thinking of this as like going to interop and, and taking one of the tutorials in there or one of the sessions there, it's not that. This is, with the exception of the Sunday stuff, this is mostly going to be people work, progressing work that's already been planned or proposing new work. Uh, social events, uh, there are occasionally we, some meetings, we don't have them. This meeting, we do. It's on Tuesday. Um, generally, if you've been doing this at least a while, you know to buy your social ticket the moment the announcement comes out, if you want to go. Um, sometimes you can find the tickets later on. 
And I'm thinking at some point along the way we need to sort of put a pod, a pool around for just the newcomers. But we'll figure that out at some point along the way. How, did any of you participate in the hackathons? Or um, cool. Okay. So we do hackathons and code sprints. They both develop software. The hackathons are more general. The code sprints are actually developing tools that the IETF uses. So if you ever want to contribute some of your time, the, the code sprint's a good way of dealing with it. There are finally some non-public non business meetings. Um, these are the groups actually meeting, discussing their own agendas. Um, with the exception of those meetings, everything that's on the agenda, you can go to. Okay, so feel free to sit in, listen, and I'll talk to you about what you, um, how you will participate in those in a minute. So disorganized events are possibly the more important thing that you're going to be doing here. This is an opportunity for you to, be, to meet people that you might know for 30, 35 years who will have some of the same knowledge that you have, that have some ideas or some goals that are along the way. Meet with people, talk with people, meet with your, your newcomers. Um, make the connections. This is, your, this is a week of making connections for making your ideas real. Um, how many people have download, have people seen the, the IETF app and downloaded it? Okay, good. So you, there is an app for this and it, I, I recommend it. Um, it's a volunteer effort by one of our participants. Um, if you don't want to go there, there are the, the two um, links that have the agenda on them. And from the agenda you can get all the work, all the meet, all the um, material for a given session. So if you get a chance, download this and, and, and walk through it. Uh, nice, session, nice thing about the app is you can mark sessions you want to attend and then just filter for them and that's all that will show up once you've done it. So I recommend that. Give me a second. Most of this is pretty straightforward. Um, please behave respectfully. Um, if somebody isn't, don't necessarily if you think someone isn't, don't necessarily think that they're being disrespectful for it to, to us, to you, because their culture may not be yours. Give them a break. Don't be annoyed too easily, and don't annoy people too easily or is the way you do it. Introduce yourself. Again, we want to know about you. We want to know what your, your goals and interests are, and we want to be able to help you, and you want to be able to help us. So that's the way you do it. Harassment. We have a policy against harassment. If you feel you're being harassed, the easiest thing to do is find somebody with the badge, either with the smiley face on it or with one of the colored dots on it, and say, help, I'm being harassed, what do I do? They will help, they won't be able to exactly help you directly, but they can point you to the ombudsman who can. So the harassment policy is here and it actually describes a little bit more about what we consider as harassment here. Um, food. Have you ever seen army? Have you ever seen those those natural history things with the army ants basically swarming a carcass and, and they walk away and there's nothing left? That's sort of like the IETF and food. So just be aware <laughs> that other people want to get in there, grab something, walk away. You're going to get a couple of. Um, there are. Do we have a bits and bytes this time around? Yeah. Okay. So. There's the welcome reception today. You've got the newcomers reception, which you're also, you're also invited to, which is at 4 before the welcome reception. And then there's bits and bytes on Thursday. Thank you. Um, so, and then there's the social as well. So you get a lot of opportunities to, to basically swarm the carcass, give other people an opportunity to. Um, don't leave your bag unguarded. I can't say this enough. Um, you can trust the guys who are here and ask them to watch your bag for you, but we do have people occasionally walk in from off the streets, and we've lost bags and things along those lines. So be, be aware of your stuff when you're here. Get some sleep. Again, this can be fairly intense, and there was a meeting in 1989, one of the earliest times, where the longest working group ran from about 8 o'clock in the morning, about 2 o'clock the next morning. I think we sent out for pizza twice. This was the host requirements document. We were trying to get it done. It had been dragging out for about four months at the time. But it was 
productive, but it was also draining. The next day, nobody was able to do anything. So, and do enjoy yourself. So, working groups are, the, the working group meetings here are the in-person version of the online working group. And the working groups are where all the standards work gets done. This is where the documents are developed, where, uh, um, where proposals are made, where discussions are done, where people yell and scream at you, well, you know, fight over, fight over text or, or religious wars in certain circumstances, and generally come up with a solution of some sort. Um, they are working sessions, so they already have an agenda. They're, you want to take a look at the agenda before you get in there and see what's going on. Birds of a feather are generally what we call proto-working groups. They are something that happens before a working group is formed. It's when we have an idea, or we have a group of people who think they have an idea, and they want to talk about it. They have an idea about what a working group could do in this space, the things like that. Mostly what comes out of a, a birds of a feather session at the end of it is a draft charter. And the charter is the document that describes to the working group what it's going to be doing for the next two to three years. The documents that are supposed to get milestones are supposed to make and things along all, all those lines. Birds of a feather tend to be a little bit more tutorial, a little bit more here's what we're thinking about. So they may be more accessible for you for your first sessions. Um, I don't actually know how many are, I, I haven't counted the agenda, um, but there's usually somewhere at like a half a dozen of these at any given time. So if, you, if you're looking for something new, take a look at the topics that the Birds of a Feather are talking about, and maybe that's something you want to go into. Pointing into the stick here refers to where all the work of the spear is done when you're sticking it into things. In this thing, the AITF areas as organized around the working groups is how we think about things. If you've got interest for a particular working group, in many cases, another working group in the same area will also provide you of some interest. So if you're, if you're trying to branch out from a particular topic or you're trying to figure, find a set of ideas that, that match what you're interested in, generally they're gonna be stuck in a, in a particular area. Now, operations and management and security in the general area actually cover these four item. So you might, so you, if you're looking for something that's in transport, but it's security, it's actually over in the security area. TLS, for example. So you'll figure it out after a little bit. Actually, I pretty much said that. When you get into a working group, if you get up to speak, go to the microphone, say your name, say who you work for the first time around, have your conversation, be brief, sit down. Um, there are, except in this session, and I don't know why, blue sheets. And the blue sheets are basically a record of participation. They're used primarily so we can figure out how many people we have to have, how, many, how much space we need for the session the next time around. So you guys are benefiting from that in this particular meeting because last time we had this many people and a third of the space. So it was a little bit crowded. So. Um, Okay. When you get in there, please sign the blue sheets. It's just, it just makes life easier for our secretary to figure out. Read the agenda and the working group drafts before you get there. If you're going to be in there, please listen to what's going on. Um, if you want to use it as a quiet space to work, that's fine too. But, you know, um, if you've got a speaker who isn't speaking loud enough, and am I, can you all hear me? I should check, this is one of the reasons I check at this point. Um, please speak up. If they, if they don't know that they're not speaking, if they're not speaking clearly or well, you need to tell them. If you've read the draft and you have a good technical comment, don't be afraid to get up and talk about it. But again, be brief. Um, everybody look around you to the seats next to you. This isn't, the room isn't really crowded right now, but if you get into a crowded room where you've got your bags and things like that really matters. So be, be kind to the other people. If the room is pretty full, take them off and, and let people sit down. Side conversations. We all want to talk. If you need to talk, mostly go outside. You can have a quick comment with somebody next to you. But if you think you're being quiet, you're not. And it's disruptive to the speaker and probably, to the peop probably more importantly to the people around you. Um, oh, Jabber channel. Uh, we have a 
chat room for each one of these working group sessions. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. If you, as a newcomer, or basically as anybody, have a question, sometimes the right answer is just type it into the Jabber channel and somebody answer it for you. And you can do that without interrupting the flow of the presentation or being, being totally confused when you get to the end and go, I needed this one point to make everything else, everything else uh, understandable. So do, do figure out how to use the Jabber stuff and go forward with that. I mentioned earlier we don't vote. Okay, so I'm going to give you an ex so you may be me you may be in a working group session and you're and you're sitting there and all of a sudden you hear something like this. Hmm. That's not incipient feedback, that's a way of dealing with consensus. Okay, it's a way of determining what the sense of the room is, for example. So, let me give you an example. We're actually going to do a worked example here. So, the question is is the room too hot, just right, or too cold? And when I call on you, you're going to hum, just like I did. And then at the end, I will, I will announce my version of what I think the consensus is. And you might argue with that, but whatever. So is the room too hot? Oh, come on. Is the room too cold? Is the room just right? Okay, I saw nodding back there. You have to hum, too. OK. So the, the, the chair in this particular say, well, it's everybody, I agree, everybody agrees the room is not too hot. Um, and I would say it's mostly that the people think the room is just right. So that would be the thing. So you get that in technical things. Um, consensus is this, all issues are addressed. You may not like what's going on. You, you, will talk, you may get up and say, this is a bad idea. They will address it. You may not win, but it's part of the process of going forward. So um, good, a good document to read if you want. Um, again, it sort of becomes organic. You sort of learn this as you go through this process. So um, as badges will have dots on them. Um, and some of the badges will have lots of dots on them, depending upon what organizations the, the participant is there. The one you're going to be dealing with the most is the working group chair of the working groups that you're involved with. But you may encounter the Internet Architecture Board member, the IESG member. IESG is the organization that consists of the area directors for all those areas. And for any given area, there's anywhere between one and three area directors. And all those together along with the IETF chair and some ex officio members constitutes the IESG. Um, nominations committee. I swear that color changes every time. That's supposed to be orange. Look, does it look brown? Okay. Very strange. Well, the last time, <laughs> thank you. Funny, haha. -ha. Um, Nobody's done that to me before. Okay, so the nominations committee, we pick our own, we pick our own um, management. And the nominations committee, the way we do it, we, pick, we take 10 people who have attended at least three of the last five meetings, put them in a room together, have them look at the, the curriculum vitae of all the people who are volunteering for the, for the jobs, and pick them. And then they get confirmed by various parts of the organization. So the IAB, the the IAB confirms the IESG members. The IESG confirms the um, Internet uh, Advisory, uh, Internet Administrative Oversight Committee people, and so on. So, um, local host. If you've got questions about Prague, if you've got questions sometimes about the network, the local host guys are the guys to go talk to. Find somebody with a green badge, uh, a green dot. They will be able to help you with quite a lot of things that are specific to this, to this venue. And they probably won't know anything about the next venue. So, um, IEOC members, these are the guys who, who are our people that are the oversight people for all the contracts and um, the structure that we've put in place to be able to do the standards work, the, the corporations, thing like, that, thing like that. Internet Research Steering Group. The, have I talked about the IRGF yet? OK. The, I, I think I've got a slide. I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit later. IRSG is the, is the collection of the chairs of the Internet Research Task Force. 
And finally, the RFC series editor, there's only one of those, and I'll give you her picture in a minute. She is responsible for making sure that the documents that you create as standard, as proto, prototype standards turn into publication quality documents. So she manages a group, she manages the process and a group of people that help you, that help us put these things forward as the request for comments series. Um, you will see people wandering around here in, um, in I think it's now a teal shirt. It was, uh, it was a, a purple shirt for the longest time. It was black for a couple of meetings and now it's teal. This is the Secretariat. We can't do our job without them. They manage the process of putting the meetings together. They're the, meet, they're the meeting managers for us. They also manage um, the process for, they, they manage the IETF tool systems and things along those lines. Um, if you can't solve it yourself and you can't find somebody like me who can help you solve it, go talk to them. They're at the registration desk. Um, they're, uh, the, the permanent staff is mostly here, but there's also some uh, local registration staff, and those are the guys on the right-hand side. Go with the guys in the blue shirts. Um, internet names and uh, assigned names and numbers. You won't have to deal with this yet, uh, but once you get to the point of building standards, you may end up finding that you need to create what we know calls a registry. Um, I mention these guys mainly because they're here. They are sitting, uh, there will be a booth, there, sorry, there'll be a table and the, the IANA folks. And if you want to discuss how to create a protocol registry for your protocol, and this is things like, a, um, like well, perfect, the, the, the original example were the internet um, IP addresses, the domain names, um, and things like uh, um, which bit meant which and which header of the IP, of the IP packet. So since then, there's, I don't know how many registries, I think it's, I think it's north of 200 for very, all various things. Does anybody here have a, um, um, a enterprise object identifier? that they got from the IETF? Okay, so that's one of the other things we do. Um, if you need an object identifier, you can get it from us. And the RFC editor, as I mentioned, is responsible for basically moving the stuff, the, our, our internet drafts and turning them into final documents. There's also this guy, and let me just go ahead to the next slide. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Marsha has left us. I, I'm waiting for a new picture. She retired last time. Ray is the employee of the Internet Society that, man that is, manages the, the contracts. The, he's, actu he's the actual guy who's responsible for signing stuff. But he is also retiring. This is his last meeting as an employee of this thing. So we'll have somebody new here. Um, IANA staff, like I said, you will see these people sitting outside. That is Heather, the RFC editor, her staff. Neville is the independent series editor. He works with, but not for, the RFC editor. And he's responsible for approving things that are not necessarily internet IETF documents to go into the RFC series. So the RFC series is more than just internet standards. It's best, uh, uh, best practices documents. It's policies. It's um, musings and thoughts. It's experimentals. It's um, sometimes republications of um, corporate protocols. For example, NFS4, uh, the network file system stuff was given to us by Sun, and that was published in the independent series. All right, read this. It's probably, it's probably your best introduction to the IETF in the history. Uh, meeting wiki, there will be, there's always one of these things. It is a collection of useful things for the meeting, including the network. But possibly more importantly is the, I want to ride to the airport, you know, who's going at the same time I am. So there's a departures wiki page off of here. Um, you can sign up and, and just enter your, enter your information in and try and meet up with somebody and share a cab or something like that. And then there's this whole bunch of tutorials that the Edu group has put together. Um, some of them are immediately useful. Others, you will just go, no, I can't do that. Never, no. Um, we're in the process of relooking at the quality of those documents. So if you've got comments, they're, 
I believe there's a, a link to point to put comments back. Um, mailing lists. We can subscribe you to 139 working groups, um, both mailing list, a bunch of everything else. Um, this is where you go for the list of lists for the IETF. Um, you are right now subscribed to that meeting, that mailing list, and you're subscribed automatically because you're newcomers. Our definition of newcomers is anybody who has been here, who has been to less than five meetings. So you're going to be a newcomer for five meetings. Um, that's actually important because you can go to the newcomer's welcome reception until you're no longer a newcomer. So you can drink on us for another five, uh, another four meetings after this one. And the network information, uh, and I'll actually, I've got a slide specifically on, on the basics for the network. But if you want more details, including things like printers and such, go to that URL. Internet Research Task Force, I mentioned just briefly before, they are the, the, I, the Internet Architecture Board appoints the chair of the IRTF. The IRTF is organized in, into some number of research task force. Each one of those research task force works on a topic that the IETF is probably not ready to work on, the researchy things. For example, we had one on delay tolerant networking, which was basically interplanetary internet. So I think that one's now closed down and we're actually looking at the technology or the designs they were thinking about in, in the IETF itself. Um, they share space with us. They are not us exactly. You're welcome to attend. However, the participation for most of the research task force is by invitation. You have to go and have a chat with the, the, the um, chairman if you want to participate. And you have to have some credentials in the space as well. Um, there's one group here that seems to be sort of bridging between the research side and the IETF side, and that's the cryptographic research, crypto research, crypto forum research group, CFRG, which is dealing with new cryptographic, pro, new cryptographic tech, um, algorithms. So their algorithms come over here and then we adapt them and put them into the protocols over on the IETF. Um, newcomers page, tools page. Jabber, I'm going to talk about in one more slide. How many of you came here with somebody who is not a nerd? You know, your wife or kids or whatever? Okay, just one. Interesting. Oh, two. Okay, three. Okay, go take a look at the companion page. This is a page that was set up to allow the people who aren't us but are stuck with us to have an opportunity to meet each other, maybe go and set up a, a day trip someplace while you know, you're nerding about. So it's a useful thing. Um, newcomers meet and greet will be immediately before the welcome session. Please go in there. Um, generally, it's set up so there are like uh, seven area tables. If you've got an area that you're interested in, go on over there. You can probably find somebody to talk to. If you've got somebody who is not a newcomer talking to somebody else who is not a newcomer and they don't seem like they're going to stop, interrupt them. The newcomers thing is all about you guys. Say, you know, I need to talk to you. Um, so it's an opportunity for you to meet and talk with the working group chairs and the area directors and before you have to sort of immerse yourself in all of this process. Um, there's a newcomer's dinner that is fairly ad hoc. Naveen um, puts it together. Um, it's on, like I said, Monday night. Um, send a note to her. And if you want to get together with some of the other newcomers, it's just an opportunity to say, OK, I've been doing this for one day. Now what? You know, what have I learned? Or to meet people that you may actually want to you know, make a connection with going forward in your, space, in your speciality. How many people here participate in the mentoring program? OK. So you've got a couple. The, 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 those of you who have, and I recommend it, it's an opportunity for you to be, be put one-on-one -on -one with somebody um, who may actually have roughly your same interests. So a lot of the stuff I'm talking about here, you can get in 15 minutes focused on exactly what you want rather than having to listen to me babble for 40 minutes. All right. I do this slide every, every time, and it changes every time. So even if you don't come back here for, um, for the rest of the presentation, stop by for this slide or, or take a look at it online. This place, more than any other place we've been to, has um, master class pickpockets. 
So be aware when you're, when you're in the tourist areas, especially in the metro, to watch your stuff, you know, wallets, things along those lines. And if you don't have to take it outside with you, put in your safe or something along those lines. Um, last time we were here, there were some strikes and demonstrations down in, in the main square area. I don't think there's go anything going on there, but they do pop up from time to time. Um, unlike when we were in Seoul, where we were actually a little bit worried about having people going into that space, I wouldn't worry about here. They tend to be fairly nonviolent. Non they tend to be nonviolent, but it can be a little bit disturbing when they're wandering around and yelling. And watch your stuff. Again, you really don't want things walking off here because it just ruins your entire time. So I've got two tutorial slides on networking in Jabber. The first one is we run one of the best networks in the world. Um, we basically come into a hotel and we take it over. The entire hotel network is down, and that's part of our contract. And that means that the hotel network is connected to our network, which is connected out to the world at a fairly large bandwidth. I don't actually know what it is this particular time. Um, generally, is now coming up on Saturday and going down by I noon on Friday. Um, it, if you look at the wireless, you'll see a bunch of IETF ones. Um, the ones that are the ones that are encrypted, and I recommend you use that. Password is I, the user ID is IF, and password is IETF. That'll at least encrypt your stuff back to the APs um, and keep people like us from eavesdropping on people like us. So there is a terminal room. No terminals in there, but there are hard docks, there are hard wires, and printers. And that's if you need to get, print your boarding pass or something like that, or you need to print out a document so you can actually mark it up, go there. Um, and I mentioned this that URL before, um, more information there. And a printout, if you go find the terminal room, there's actually a printout of all the network information there. So if you don't want to actually go online to get it, you can go there. Um, how many people here have used Jabber? Okay, good. Um, Jabber is a chat client, and it's, and it's based on protocols the IETF developed, the XMPP protocol. Um, we, use, we use it for back-channel communications during the meeting, or you know, side-channel communications. Um, I recommend you get a Jabber account and a Jabber client. I can't recommend a particular client because there are so many clients and so many possibilities of implementations, uh, so many possibilities of Macs, PCs, ver uh, you know, lockdown, not lockdown, things like that. You can generally find an account, a place to register your account at the URL I've got there. And the chat rooms are generally set up as the working group name and at jabber.ietf.org. Um, if you've got questions that you don't want to stand up at the microphone and ask, or by the time you stood up in the microphone and asked would be OBE, and you would lose that, please go into the Jabber room and, and look. Um, the other thing the Jabber room is used for is sort of a, a running commentary or a, a high level of what's being talked about or who's at the microphone or things along those lines. So one of the reasons we ask you to stand up and, use, and tell us your name is so that the scribes can get your name down um, for the people who are watching in Jabber or watching uh, over the air on MeTeco or something along those lines. So, so we've come to the end. Um, any questions? Go to the microphone, say your name. You get to be my demonstrator. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, my name is Ramesh Sivakulundu, and I have a specific question about remote access to these meetings if you can't attend the meetings in person. Okay. Um, yes, we do provide remote access to most. Of the, I think we're now providing them to all the working groups. Um, we're still working out what that means in terms of are you just watching us, are you participating? Um, it's still a work in progress, um, but uh, I think we now... Um, uh, I think we now have a sign-up for remote access, um, and you can attend, you can attend the meeting. The problem, i got to say, with remote access is you don't get this. You don't get the people in the room. You don't get the hallway conversations and things along those lines. You may be able, if you're focused on a particular working group, to progress what you want to go, but I recommend coming to the meeting every so often. So, questions?
Questions? Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, so, as I started out, as I started out at the beginning of this, this is all about meeting and taking your opportunity to to reach out to other people and make the contacts and bring your ideas forward. We really do want to hear your ideas. We really do want you to be successful participants in the IETF. So, with that, let me say, go forth and standardize. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Yeah, please make sure you take the survey. And I'll see you all at four drinking.